Okay, so admittedly, when I first saw this question, I was like, how and why? And then it all came together quite nice. Um, I think you'll see the same thing for yourself. A thin glass rod of radius R and length L carries a uniform surface charge sigma. It is set spinning about its axis at an angular velocity omega. Find the magnetic field at a distance S much greater than R from the axis in the xy plane. Hint, treat it as a stack of magnetic dipoles. Alrighty, let's uh, first consider the glass rod. We see that it is spinning with uh, angular velocity omega about z, has a length or a, a length L split above, evenly above the xy plane into L over two parts, and has radius r. And now we know we want to solve this for some point in the xy plane. Why not let's have it on the x-axis for the sake of argument. Um, yeah, so when we redraw this as a stack of dipoles, this thing gets kind of gross kind of fast, but the geometry of it is not that bad, to be honest. It's just a lot to consider, and what we need to do is to incorporate these things step by step and instead of finding necessarily the angle measures themselves, just use the trig function definitions of like opposite over hypotenuse and so forth. All right, let's dive in. All right, so for our solution, for the dipole at the origin and a field point in the xz plane, or x, uh, xy, excuse me, uh, we have v equals zero. So when we expand the magnetic field of a dipole, we need to plug in the fact that r hat and theta hat have uh, components. So we'll plug them in and factor them into x and z uh, as such. Um, yeah, so it is x, z plane, excuse me. So anyways, we factor it down and we uh, simplify. Again, I got those from the back of the book. And here we see that for a stack of dipoles, a stack of such dipoles, running from z equal negative l over 2 to z equal l over 2, uh, we can now put a field point at as s on the x-axis, which we talked about. The x components cancel because of symmetrically placed dipoles above and below z equals 0. Um, okay, that makes sense. We get cancellations there. So we uh, now have b equal mu naught over 4 pi big M, Integrate it from negative L over 2 to L over 2 of 3 cosine squared theta minus 1 over R cubed dz, z hat. Okay, uh, m here is the dipole moment per unit length. Uh, and we note that due to symmetry, we have a symmetric integral. And therefore, we can uh, take the bottom limit to 0, but double it. Okay, thank you, symmetry. All right, so now we need to do a, do a little more work. So if M is the magnetic dipole and it's I times the vector area, then for a cylinder, we know that that is equal to pi r squared, a circle. So we have I pi r squared here, but I is sigma vh, okay? And now we need to put v in terms of omega, which is omega r, and we simplify that through. We see that we end up with the magnetic dipole moment of omega or sigma omega pi r cubed times h so with capital m being little m over h the h is cancel and we're left with sigma omega pi r cubed so now again we know from basic definitions of the trig functions that sine of theta is equal to s over r therefore one over r is equal to sine theta uh divided by s all right why does this matter we have a one over r cubed term in the uh, integral, so let's cube both sides of this, yielding 1 over r cubed is equal to sine cubed theta over s cubed. And similarly, we have a z term that we need to have a differential element for. So we know that z is equal to negative s cosine theta. Take the derivative, we get dz equals s over sine squared d theta. All right, let's plug it all in. We see here that once we do that with the 1 over r cubed term, um, the m capital M term, and the dz term, we get a lot of cancellations. We get a pi from the m term, 
we cancel out uh, a lot of this. We cancel out the whole s over sine squared term with factors from the one over r cubed term, and thus we're left with a pretty simple integral. Note that with the substitution, we had to change the limits from zero to l over two to pi over two to sigma m or sigma theta m, which were all defined on the diagram. And uh, now we just need to evaluate the integral, and we do so as such. Uh, once evaluated, we need to simplify. We see that we can factor and have something of the form uh, where we can substitute in with the Pythagorean identity. Uh, and so here we are left with mu naught sigma omega r cubed divided by 2s squared cosine theta m times sine squared theta m in the z hat direction, of course. And now again, if we go back to the definitions of the trig functions, we can express sine theta m as uh, opposite over hypotenuse and j uh, cosine as the adjacent over hypotenuse, respectively, with those terms. And once we substitute those in, we see that we get a three halves term in the denominator, which is pretty darn familiar with all that we've seen so far and uh yeah everything else simplifies down pretty nice that was a lot of fun and a lot of mess all at once